Hello my girlies and welcome to a brand new spooky video, okay? It's your girl Riley. Today I'm going to be doing yet another conspiracy theory video, okay? A lot of you guys seem to have really liked the first one, which like I was like really happy about because I was like, what if no one cares about it? But thank you guys so much for watching that first one. Now, let's continue. Well, the first conspiracy theory that I want to talk about revolves around one of my favorite childhood shows that I'm pretty sure we've all seen before, and that is Spongebob, okay? Listen, Spongebob has so many conspiracy theories, okay? there's I'm pretty sure if you look, there's probably like hour-long videos of literally every single conspiracy theory on Spongebob. It's, it's, it's a whole... Spongebob is a whole other thing, you know? But today I'm going to focus on one, okay? And that one conspiracy is going to be based on one character, and that is Mrs. Puff, okay? We all know Mrs. Puff, who was like the teacher and, the, and SpongeBob and stuff. But what if I told you, right? Now, please hear me out because you're going to think I sound crazy, but please just hear me out, okay? What if I told you that Mrs. Puff might be a psychopath, okay? Now, let me explain, okay? Please, just give me a sec. There is an episode of SpongeBob called no free rights okay and now if you've seen this episode you might know what i'm talking about and if you haven't let me explain to you okay so basically in this episode mrs puff says something that's kind of weird and a little suspicious and well i'm gonna play you guys the clip and you guys let me know what you guys think and then i'll go ahead and get my thoughts what have i done everyone will know that i let him slide through school i'll have to move to a new city start a new boating school with a new name no not again. So, what I'm basically getting is that Mrs. Puff basically admitted that she has basically faked her identity before. That basically she has had to have moved out of town, changed her name, changed her whole identity, start a brand new life, and just start from fresh. And from what we heard, she's done that before, right? here's where it gets a little bit crazier there's another episode i think in like a farther season like i think this episode was like maybe one of like the first few seasons and then like the next episode where they kind of bring this back is like i think in like season like 12 or something there's an episode where spongebob goes to basically help mrs puff like organize like all her stuff and basically you know spongebob finds this newspaper in her junk that says something like teacher makes a getaway so basically it's been almost shown to us that this is almost true that mrs puff isn't who she is and that she has had to have changed her identity had to have start from scratch and basically just faking her way through life every time she gets at risk of getting in trouble or something Maybe she just, you know, runs away, probably fakes her death, and moves to another town and starts from scratch. I don't know, that one's a little weird. I didn't believe it at first, but then, like, I just think, I always think to myself, like, all these little details as to, like, why it could make sense. Why did they reference this once again, like, seasons later? I don't know, it's just, it's all too much. So this next theory is about one of my favorite childhood Disney movies called Aladdin. So there is a theory, a very popular theory, like I don't know how many times I've heard this theory when I was researching for these conspiracies, but there is a theory about Aladdin, about how it doesn't take place back in the days, it actually takes place years in the future during a post-apocalyptic world. Let me explain, okay? So basically, the reason why they, people believe this theory is because of Genie. So when Genie gets freed from the lamp, Genie basically admits that he has been trapped in that lamp for over like 10,000 years or something like that. But then you also see him make references to like Arnold Schwarzenegger, like a slot machine. He has a microphone and like I think other stuff that I don't even remember when I was researching this. But wouldn't it be weird we all know when aladdin takes place right like we get the atmosphere right this takes place during like almost like almost like medieval time like right like you guys get what i'm trying to mean like if you know the whole concept of aladdin and like the world it takes place in things like technology microphones arnold schwarzenegger like this stuff didn't exist for people back then so how is it that genie just like knows all this stuff if this is supposedly 
years before any of this even existed you know what i mean so people basically believe the theory that that there was basically like a war or something and it was basically like post-apocalyptic like everyone had to start from scratch and everyone just like everyone is also basically just starting from the beginning and that is why genie just like knows all this stuff you know I saw a tiktok of someone talking about this about like the timeline and something saying that like basically this means that genie when he was you know put in the lamp and stuff this technically means that he was put in the lamp in like 1990 which i don't know how true that is but i don't know i don't really have any way to like you know I don't have any way to like support that statement because I don't have proof of that. I just literally heard that from someone on TikTok. But basically, yeah, that Aladdin doesn't take place in the past. It takes place far in the future. And when Genie comes out and says that he has been trapped in there for 10,000 years, it, he's basically been trapped like from the modern days. So he was freed. He basically realized like everyone's starting from, you know, from the beginning. There's another theory that I will talk about that basically is along the same thing as Aladdin and that is the Flintstones. I'm sure maybe some of you guys have heard of this, okay, but the funnel is the childhood cartoon of people who live in like the caveman days and all that stuff, you know. People notice how weird it is that even though these people live in like, you know, cave, like live in caveman days and stuff like that, like this was like when the earth first even like had human beings and all that stuff you know how is it that these cavemen just like know about certain things that we have today you know what i mean like for starters i'm pretty sure we all know they all drive cars right i mean they're made out of stones we get it but like they drive cars how did cavemen just like know this stuff you know there's even an episode that i saw a while back where they were basically making a record player right little a record player like mine up there right they put the disc on it and it played music right and it's like how did cavemen know about this how do they just know about this you know i think there's even an episode where they watch tv it's like how did they how do they know this like technology wasn't even a thing so like how do they just know about tvs about record players about cars like it's just like it's you know it's just crazy that it's like these are cavemen but they're living modern days just like we are you know and that theory is also the same as the aladdin one where basically this doesn't take place in the past this actually takes place in the future in a post-apocalyptic world basically saying something like if world war three or if another war happened we'd all be wiped out and we'd have to be and we'd be forced to start from the beginning and that is kind of terrifying to me to think that like all this time that I've been watching cartoons and stuff about like, you know, what the past was like, it's like, what if I'm watching this to prepare myself for the future? Like, I just, oh God, I don't even like thinking about it. I just, it gives me the chills. So I have two more for you. These ones are kind of dark. I will be honest with you guys. These ones kind of did ruin me a little bit, especially the last one, but I'm going to save that one for last, obviously. This first one that I want to talk about is about the movie Finding Nemo, okay? We all know the movie Finding Nemo where it's basically about two goldfish, a couple, and this like tragedy happens in their house where like this like fish like goes and basically kills Marlin's whole family. But he's left with one of his children and that is of course Nemo, okay? And then like he grows up and then he goes missing and Marlin goes after looking for him and stuff like that. So basically the theory is that for starters, I just want to mention because I didn't know about this, but the theory is that the name Nemo in Latin translates to nothing or nobody. I didn't know about that. But basically, the theory to support this also is that Nemo actually isn't alive, right? So we all know that the movie opens with this tragedy of Marlin's family basically getting killed by this like fish. And he finds one of his children, which is Nemo. And... You know, he's left with that last bit of hope that like, you know, at least a little piece of his family is still alive, you know. But it's so dark to think that what if Nemo isn't alive? What if Nemo doesn't exist? And Marlin is just literally going crazy because of the fact that he literally lost his whole entire family, right? 
Like, if you remember that opening scene when you see all their babies, they have a lot of babies, right? And to think that the whole family was killed and one was left, obviously that has to mess with you, especially being a parent, you know? So the base, so basically the theory is that Nemo is actually not alive and that Marlin is just looking for his son this whole entire time and he's just going crazy, he's hallucinating that he basically has a son but what if he doesn't? And this is just basically him dealing with the grief of losing his entire family. And maybe this is why the title Finding Nemo is because what if this whole time that Marlin's been going crazy and he's just been dealing with the loss of his whole family what if this whole time that he's been looking for his only son left, he's been finding nothing or nobody this whole entire time? That one messed with me. I'll be honest with you guys. That one kind of like gave me chills. I was like, that's so messed up to think about. And that definitely ruins the movie for me. So I'm sorry if I ruined it for you. Okay, so this last one is one of my favorite ones. This one literally gave me so many chills as to how scared this made me, okay? This last theory is about... The movie cars okay i love this movie so much okay but basically let me let me tell you about this movie okay so one thing we know about cars is that this whole entire movie there's no humans right this is literally just cars like that's it the whole population is cars not a single human is in sight right in movies like toy story where it's like the main characters that you're supposed to focus on are all toys but there are still humans, you know what I mean? But how is it that a movie about cars, there's no humans in sight at all, right? Like you never see a human being in any of the Cars movies, not even like the Cars, like the Toons or the Mater stories, like none of them, right? But the reason why people think this is so crazy to think about is because these are vehicles we're talking about, right? These have to have been created by human beings because otherwise, how are cars just born? Like, how are cars just born? Right? You know, you can't just you can't just start the world and it's just like the human the living things are vehicles. Like you can't just like how did they do that? You know what I mean? This had to have taken years because I mean look how far it took us to start having self-driving vehicles, right? But the theory is that basically the technology of self-driving cars got way too advanced to the point where cars can now start having feelings, emotions, and start taking control of their own selves. And it probably got to the point where they were like, we don't need humans anymore. So the theory was that basically that the cars all took over the world, right? Every single car was advanced to the point where they all were built with technology. They all have emotions, they have feelings, and they're able to control themselves without needing a human being. So they realize there's no need for humans anymore. We can just run this whole world, right? So basically the theory is that all the humans were wiped out by every single one of these cars that were built by humans. And these cars now run the world, basically. <laughs> That one kind of freaked me out because I literally always just think to myself, I'm like, why is it that this movie specifically doesn't have any humans? Because I did always compare it to other movies, right? Like there's other movies where it's like, it's not humans, but it is still like in a world where humans exist. Think like, you know, Toy Story, like Avatar, <laughs> like, you know, like there's movies that the main characters aren't human, but there are humans out there. You know what I mean? And there's tons of movies like that. Even alien movies. You know, there was that movie Home. Uh, Escape from Planet Earth. There were so many movies where the main characters aren't human. But there are still humans around. Because, I mean, obviously, you know. But how is it that Cars literally takes place on Earth, right? Like, this isn't a movie about space. This isn't aliens. This is a movie that takes place on Earth. How are there no humans in sight? Not a single one. I just thought to myself when I saw that theory, I was like, that is so scary to think about, especially because we now live in a world where like self-driving cars are so normal now that later on, people are gonna advance them to the point where now your car can have feelings. It's gonna start controlling itself. And what if you can't even trust your own car now, you know? 
But anyway, those are just some of the little theories that I found for you guys. I hope some of these kind of ruined you, you know. They kind of ruined my feelings, you know, especially my views on certain childhood movies, you know. But this is what I love about them is that they really make you think. Like, they really, like, get in your head and you start thinking to yourself, like, how did I never notice this or anything like that? Anyways, if you guys did like this, then please make sure to leave me a like. Please make sure to subscribe to your girly, okay, for more conspiracies. If you guys would like to see more conspiracy theory videos, please make sure to let me know in the comments. But anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!